One of my clients came up with this analogy and I love it. Using both Evernote and Obsidian is like having two specific pans to cook very different types of food. Isn't this cool? <laughs> it makes sense. So the million dollar question is how to choose the correct pan. Before we move on, just give me a few seconds to tell you about two new types of content I'm sharing on Patreon. One of it is a Discord server. All the members, this is also for YouTube members. All the members can, can be part of the server. It's fun. If you are a member, please join the server. We are having a lot of fun there. The other one is a podcast. Unfortunately, this one is just for Patreon supporters because YouTube doesn't have this feature. And there's another uh, type of content that is it, I've been sharing for a long time now on Patreon. All the articles that I publish on Medium uh, behind a, a, a paywall are also available for Patreon supporters. Again, YouTube doesn't give me the tools to publish articles there. So this is why this is Patreon only. At first, it doesn't look like, but Evernote and Obsidian are more similar than most people think. Here's an, a quick example. We can order the notes the same way in both apps. We have alphabetic order, we have chronological order. This is, this is a, a, a very Evernote feature that we have uh, on Obsidian. And there are many other features like this that we have in both apps. For my use cases, the difference is on how Obsidian deals with files. And this can be good or bad. For example, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't like the way uh, the files are not part of notes. I, I much prefer the way Evernote does it, just drag the file there and the file belongs to that note. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there are other videos here in the channel that can help you. But that can be helpful in other situations. So let me go through the three uh, big topics that are helping me decide uh, in which of the apps I create a new note or store a new file. And talking about files, let's start with files. As you already know, I'm an Android user. I love my Mac. I have a, an old Apple there. <laughs> but yeah, I stopped using the iPhone, I guess. The last iPhone I used was the 6 or something like that. Uh, I still use my iPod, though. I run with this. <laughs> this is a topic for another, another video. Oh, by the way, this is pretty interesting. I can synchronize it with my... M1 Mac, crazy things. Anyway, uh, because I use an Android and a Mac, it's not easy to synchronize files. In fact, it's pretty hard. Uh, if you follow the channel for, for a while now, you know that I was using Google Drive to do that. But Google Drive, uh, it, it has its problems. Uh, the files have to be synchronized. I have to set them to be available uh, if I'm offline. And there are, there are some little uh, things that we have to pay attention to. And because Obsidian used the computer file structure to store all the files, when we synchronize devices, all the files are also synchronized. If I open a file, let's say a PDF, by navigating to it using the Android file system and edit something on, annotate something on that PDF, that will be synchronized. So all the notations I did on my Android will show up on my Mac, on my iPad. And, 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 and it's true, though the other way around is also true. So this is an unexpected benefit uh, all the files I'm constantly needing, the ones I used to have in Google Drive, I now can access in any of my devices. On the other end of the spectrum, there are some files that I never want to synchronize. They are giant files. They are related to the YouTube videos. Uh, I've talked about them in the past. I can have a clip of a video I'm working on, a B-roll, whatever it is, I can write around it. I've, I've done this many times because uh, videos like this one that I'm recording now, I can record and talk and it's, it's, it's not that I, 
it is easy, but it's much easier than the ones that you see a, a, a screen recording or more detailed videos. I need to write a much more detailed script. I need to have some clips. I need to have some B-rolls and all that is in the note. And those are the videos, the actual files that I'll be dragging into Final Cut Pro when I, when I start editing the project. When I'm taking a, an everyday note, all I wanna do is drag an image, drag a file or whatever it is into the note and that's it. But in this case, it's much better to have the, the files stored as files inside the, the file structure. I think you agree with me if you try to remember the last time you needed to send to someone else a file that you have in a note in every note. And let's add another complication there. Imagine you were using your phone when you needed to do that. <laughs> so there are two, these two situations. One, it is good to have the files in the note and in the other, it's not good. The way Obsidian deals with the files is what I'm using to decide where I'll create a new node or store a file. This one is straightforward. I have already talked about it in other videos, but a while ago I decided to try Obsidian Publish and I'm still in love with it. It's amazing. All I have to do to change something on my website is do it on Obsidian and hit publish and that's it. Everything is synchronized and the website is updated. That's great. I love it. So all the files that are related to my website are also in Obsidian. If you learned something useful today, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you like what I do here on the channel, please subscribe. It helps a lot. Thanks for watching. See you soon.